Hello and welcome, new week, new graphic novel review by me, Andrew Ace. You can find me online at UYS999 or check out my website, UYSFABER, at uh, my last name, Acefaber, uh, dot com, uh, where you can find my own comic books uh, along with reviews and some free web comics. Lots of great stuff. So, this week I am going to be reviewing The Best of Isad Ribic. Now, Isad Ribic is an artist um, that I encountered a number of years ago, uh, actually on Thanksgiving weekend. So, I thought just having finished another Thanksgiving, that's Canadian Thanksgiving weekend, um, that uh, I would um, talk about some of my favorite books that he has done. So, uh, the book I'm referring to is Loki. Now, this has been re-released as Thor Blood Brothers, uh, which also has an animated sort of version. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen that. I think it's one of those stop-motion kind of uh, animated stories like they did, um, I want to say with Watchmen, uh, but Spider-Woman, Astonishing X-Men. Um, this is a phenomenal read. I mean, part of what made it so exciting was I didn't know what to expect. So, you know kind of the difference between going into a movie where you've been super hyped by the media, everybody's telling you it's awesome, or going to a film you haven't really heard much about and discovering you know, a new lifetime favorite, an absolute classic, a cult classic, whatever, but uh, coming out and being like, oh my goodness, that was amazing. And that's how I felt reading this. So to show you some of the artwork, um, Esau Ribic uses a painterly style, or rather, he oil paints, is it oil paints, water paints? Um, certainly, uh, I know it's changed a little bit with some of his later work, uh, and I say that because uh, I'm fortunate enough to own a page that he did, um, but uh, I believe um, that, that this is a, a very, I mean, you look at the artwork, it's very different than some traditional superhero comic book material, and it has a very painted, uh, epic, uh, almost like I want to say like a, a classical painting or a renaissance painting. I mean, it's just so breathtaking, so epic. Uh, it feels like it comes from that time and era. Now, this particular book, what makes it so amazing for me, uh, is also the story. And the premise starts with Loki has won, and then this is what comes after uh, once Loki rules Asgard. And of course, uh, Loki the trickster, you know, gets what's coming to him, kind of like most trickster stories. Uh, the serpent eats his own tail, but uh, it is very much just uh, the journey to see what happens. Also, getting to see it with Isar Ribic's artwork, you would not be disappointed if you added Loki, or as it's now called, Thor Blood Brothers, uh, to your graphic novel library. So, he's also done some more uh, Thor material more recently, uh, and that's with Jason Aaron, one of my favorite writers. Now, this was not the latest launching or two. Uh, what with uh, the new female Thor, there also there being, I think, a Secret Wars tie-in called Thors, uh, and I believe it's now being relaunched again, Mighty Thor. Um, but certainly, this was before that and just prior to that. Uh, so part of the uh, all new, all different uh, Marvel, uh, Marvel Now, um, and uh, it is just, again, uh, a phenomenal read. You can never go wrong with Isad Ribic's artwork. Um, Jason Aaron, an amazing writer. And this introduced what has now become uh, very popular, uh, and this is the second volume, um, Old Thor, so sort of, you know, old, uh, old Father Thor, who has taken Odin's place, end of time, um, and then there's young Thor in this as well, who's still with the Vikings, and, and you know, I want to sort of say 800 AD. Uh, he hasn't earned M M Mjolnir, uh, mispronouncing that. You know, quickly, say it on the spot, go. Um, and, and this story sort of weaves itself then through the three time periods. The past, the present with Avengers Thor, this future, uh, and the main villain being uh, this god who's killing gods. Uh, a great read. Uh, the, the series kept on going with Jason Aaron as writer, but uh, switched artists. So that's why I'm just showing off these two books, um, because like I said, this is the best of Esau Ribic. So, that's some more Thor that he did. Now, you'll notice that all of these books are pretty much Marvel. 
Uh, and while Isar Gravik did do some work with uh, Vertigo um, back in, well, early 2000s, I'm actually excited to try and track down uh, work he did with Brian Azzarello in the Strange Tales anthology, I think, four-issue run that was released around 1999-2000. So, you know, you, you do a little research, you learn something new, and you gotta, you know, hunt down a new book for your collection. Now this, I've spoken about Uncanny X-Force before. Again, this is a couple volumes or a couple series runs back. Um, and this is prior to the even the Marvel Now. Uh, Rick Remender, phenomenal writer. Uh, and this is the second volume uh, where um, Isad Rebbe comes on board. And he's telling this sort of Deathlock uh, weird alternate story not quite future, but, um, well, it's hard to explain without giving away too much of it, but certainly if, um, you're a fan of the X-Men, or if you're a fan of, uh, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which has, uh, seen Deathlock brought to the TV screen, um, then you'll definitely, definitely, uh, enjoy this, and if you're excited for the X-Men Apocalypse movie coming out next year. Is it next year? 2017? I get a little confused sometimes. Um, well, this stars Apocalypse as well. And actually, it's definitely worth picking up Volume 1, even though it doesn't have Esau Ribic, um, and then reading the two following volumes, the Dark Angel Saga, uh, all together, an absolute phenomenal, kind of dark, darker, grittier take on the X-Men characters, featuring, of course, Wolverine, Deathlock, Deadpool, um, lots of fan favorites, and a phenomenal read. So, moving on. Now, there's two books I wish I had in my collection that I don't that Isad Rubik did. Um, the first is called Submariner of the Depths. Uh, the other is Silver Surfer Requiem. Now, maybe I'm actually getting their releases re reversed. I think Silver Surfer came out first, then Submariner. Uh, they're beautiful books. Um, I had a chance to read them a while back and didn't, unfortunately, add them to my library. But as I'm doing this review, uh, I'm really feeling the need that they should be. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to track them down and get them. But uh, yeah, they're, they're standalone tales, sort of, you know, slightly alternate takes, or almost kind of like a Marvel Knights take uh, on those two characters. Uh, and that's again, that Silver Surfer Requiem and Submariner Depths. Now, the last two books. Uh, that I've got for Ribic that I'm going to be reviewing. This is Ultimate Comics The Ultimates. This was before um, Secret Wars, before Marvel Now. Uh, it's the Ultimate universe, universe, of course, which I don't think Marvel Now actually tapped into. Um, and was with Jonathan Hickman before he jumped on the main Avenger titles. He jumped on, well, the Ultimate version, Ultimates being the Avengers in the Ultimate Universe, and Esau Ribic was tapped to uh, illustrate um, the first two volumes. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Um, a lot of what's playing out in Secret Wars um, really uh, finds its roots here, uh, what with uh, the city and the sort of evil uh, returned, well, uh, Mr. Fantastic. I hope I'm not spoiling too much there. Um, but, um, they're, they're a couple years old. Uh, I want to sort of say 2011 or 2012 without actually checking a date. Uh, you know, I love Jonathan Hickman. I think he's a phenomenal writer. So once again, you know, you've got an amazing writer te teamed up with an amazing artist, uh, and you, you know, well, produce books that I consider some of the best in my graphic novel library. Now, um, with all of that mentioned, uh, one thing I should say, and I don't have the graphic novel for it because it hasn't been released, but Esau Ribic is the artist for the main, um, but the Secret Wars event that's just sort of rolled through Marvel, changed up all their titles. Uh, I still have to read issue number six. I've got that saved, but uh, I read the first five issues. Phenomenal read, and... You know, it's up to you if you like these mega events, and to be perfectly honest, um, how much do they really end up changing the world? I know that the big thing is obviously they're collapsing the Ultimate Universe into Marvel 616, so you're going to have, like, um, the Mark, Mike Morales, the their, their Spider-Man uh, is going to come over 
uh, and, and, you know, be with Peter Parker, and they're going to be merging some of the things, which is, you know, cool. Um, but, uh, you know, for the mega events, it's tough, because there's obviously a lot of tie-ins, which they've done a lot of times for Secret Wars. You've got Battle Worlds, um, and, and just a ton of series. But, uh, I've been trying to read some of them, and, and you know, they're fun. But, uh, Esau Ribic's artwork just blows me away every time, and, um, you know, for that alone, I'm going to be picking up Secret Wars. So that's just finished, just wrapping up, and, uh, you know, the graphic novel will probably be out in about three months, six months if you want to wait for the soft cover. Well, guys, you can find me online at UYS999. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Uh, take my last name, at Faber.com, and that's my website. I don't plug it a lot, but I, I write and publish comic books myself. And uh, yeah, another graphic novel review. I'll see you guys uh, next week. Cheers.